Hello everyone, it's me again and today, rather in this reflection, I will be talking about what I got out of the video, 3 sacrifices you must make if you want to receive the blessing of a godly marriage. And so ironically, I am talking about this because I've never myself been in a relationship. And I guess I'll tell you why at the end of this. So let's start. Um, number one, God is asking me to sacrifice short-term pleasures so he can bless me with long, long-term long joyful stability. We never have to earn the good things given to us by God. Nowhere in the Bible states that. Only by grace are we blessed with good things. Nonetheless, God asks us to make sacrifices not to earn something from God, but to receive something from Him. You must learn to let things go before God can give you something better. Leave your old lives behind if you have truly found Christ. I hope I'm doing that right now. Um, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 to 24 says, You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in, the right, in true right, righteousness and holiness. So, what a godly, ma godly marriage is, is two Christian individuals coming together to live with Christ as the center of their lives. Yes, it's very important. Okay, number two. God is asking you to sacrifice your connection to worldliness if you truly desire the blessing of a godly marriage. You should seek to become the kind of person you want to date. Quote, You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, He yearns zealously over the spirit, that he has made to dwell in that he has made to dwell in us End quote. okay how can we in good conscience conscience try to win people over to Christ as we simultaneously ignore God's word by becoming unequally yoked with them the very word we are telling others that they should obey. Yeah, in other words, uh, if you truly want to see conversion in others, I guess you should reflect it within yourself. If not, you cannot expect them to follow, follow you because you yourself don't even follow what you preach. You know, you must practice what you preach. You know, that's what this is trying to say. Don't be friends with the world. Don't join in the ways of sin, so rampant among non-Christians and, and not just non-Christians, but Christians who don't believe, like me, or didn't, didn't believe, sorry. <laughs> Be friendly and kind to all people, but do not confide in them and depend on them as friends do, lest we be led astray by their unbelief. God is asking you to sacrifice your freedom from spiritual discipline if you desire the blessing of a godly marriage. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is point three. Point three. This, what I just said was point three. This is a lie. Discipline and freedom are opposed to each other, one another. Those who want to be free from spiritual discipline end up living as slaves to sin. But those who practice the spiritual disciplines 
end up being able to live free for Christ. So spiritual disciplines uh, are a means by which our hearts are fed. God has an abundance of grace and joy He is ready to give us, but we have to take up take up what? We have to take up and eat daily. Oh, I guess take up and eat this grace and enjoy daily. I don't think I I mean like literally, but like you know. Yeah. When we reject spiritual disciplines like daily prayer, scripture reading, and weekly participation with the local church, it is like walking by a feast God has prepared for us and going to eat some worms or maggots we find in the dumpster in some back alley. <laughs> That's what I was doing for the longest time, man. Eating worms and maggots. Nice. Good to know. Okay, so anyways, um, I think a godly marriage is important because at the end of the day, marriage is a vocation and what it truly means to get married is, is when two individuals come together to journey to the kingdom of heaven. And so marriage is far from a pretty picture, you know? I never wanted to ever date. I've never wanted to date because I guess from experience at home a, lo a lot of the time when when I was younger and now also um, I get into the most trivial arguments with my mother and my sister and a lot of the time I guess it's a very sudden outburst from them which really get which really like boom slams me and if you think about it if you have so much trouble talking to the females at home what makes you think that you're ready for marriage in any way or form because at the end of the day no matter how truly beautiful or pretty or whatever your girlfriend is or the girl you really want to date is, when you guys end up living together and the purpose is just off, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not sustainable. Whereas, when two individuals come together, with the intention of, I guess, getting closer to God. I think that is the best way to go about, I guess, consummating the marriage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because in reality, marriage is really not a pretty picture, you know. My parents do argue from time to time, but I'm glad, for, I'm glad that both of them make an effort to put God in the center of your lives. And the fact is, it's not easy because there will be fights, you know, especially when you live together, fights are inevitable. Yeah. Especially when you have an ego as big as mine or my mom's, then yeah, fights are inevitable. But fighting is not bad. What is bad is running away after that, the Cold War, which Follows. That is bad because I think you need to communicate after. Yeah. And you need to practice humility so that we can become more like Jesus Christ. So I hope you took something out of this video. Thanks.